Hey everybody, this is Pete. <laughs> it's been a while since I knocked out a video, so I want to get back into the flow. And I want to share a technique to build an elliptical contour flange. So this would take some kind of specialized tooling, but this came across from a customer. You can see it's a little bit of an intricate shape here. And unfortunately the contour flange didn't do it. So I want to kind of share some tips and techniques on how to accomplish this. To save a little bit of time, I've already knocked out the plate and I'm actually going to build this as just one quarter of the part. And then I will mirror when I get the geometry right for the completed part. This is actually a pretty slick technique when you're working on some complex geometry, like the intersection of the ellipse at the corner. I don't want to have to do that multiple times. I'll just handle it the first time and then I'll mirror that result. So I've just made uh, one quadrant of the plate, if you will, and I've already knocked out some parameters, some of them to control the overall size of the plate, some to control the desired um, corner geometry and, and various portions of the flange itself. And then I'm defining the elliptical shape as well. So to start out, I'll build a sketch just so we can see how this ellipse is constructed. So as always, only project the geometry that you need. I just need this point. The ellipse is actually under the circle command. So I'll pick on the ellipse, touch this corner, rise up, and then we'll go ahead and complete the major and minor radius. So to apply dimensions to an ellipse, I just click on the dimension tool. I'm gonna list the parameters. This is gonna be my ellipse major radius. And then I also want the ellipse minor radius. So I'd already gone through that once before. That's where I found those. And then I'm gonna create a couple of lines. Start one here to here and then over to here. So that fully constrains the shape. I'm gonna press the X key to trim off the part of the ellipse I don't need. And the shape I want is actually just the elliptical curve and this edge up top. So I can select this vertical edge and convert it to construction geometry. So that's the elliptical flange, at least on the inside. Now here's the rub. What would be ideal is to simply use the contour flange Pick on an edge, there you go, it's gonna make it. Of course, have it go the correct direction. And then I want to apply that to this edge. Boo! So it just doesn't work. For whatever reason, an ellipse is too tricky of a shape to use the contour flange on. So this is where I'm gonna show you the alternate technique. So we're gonna use a combination of surface modeling techniques and um, sheet metal eventually to create the shape. So the first step is to go ahead and launch the sweep tool. I'm going to make sure I pick this open sketch. That makes sure it's a surface. It should only pick a surface anyway because you only have the one edge. And I'm going to build out this corner. So I hit OK. There is the inside of that elliptical flange. So because this is actually a bend, I'm going to come back over with the fillet command pick these two edges, and this is where you have some options, right? We could list the parameters. There is, of course, bend radius if you just want to stick with the sheet metal rule, but I actually created a parameter desired edge or flat to ellipse radius, and there we have it. So that's going to be on the bend side. That would be the bend radius. Hit OK. And now we bring it a little bit um, funky. So to, in order to get this to work well, I need to trim this off so we could actually flatten the sheet metal part. So I'll create a sketch here and we have to define the type of geometry that we want to control the shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and project a couple pieces of geometry. Let's see, I'll project this one and this edge. And then I, I basically just want this edge at the back. So I want this corner point. So you, you get some options here to decide how you want to do this. So I'm going to come across like so, come back over to here. Okay, so I create my shape. Uh-oh, missed the corner. So we'll make that coincident. Actually make sure that these are touching. 
There we go. Okay, so I just missed the one corner. <laughs> but I also want to make sure that this midpoint is coincident with this back point. So we're going to make it the same. I'm going to apply uh, equal constraint here to make sure these are the same length. And then this is another decision you get to make. There is a parameter. So if I dimension from here to here, this is what that cut's going to be. So you can link it to the sheet metal rule, right? There's a gap size or I made my own desired corner gap. So I'll go ahead and apply that. So it's very tight. You can of course decide how you want to do that. And then you also can decide on a relief piece of geometry. I'm just going to simply do a full radius here. That will be my relief shape, but you could play with different types of course, but that's, that is the shape that we would want to define for that relief at the corner. So I finished the sketch and I'm going to extrude this. Oh, that's right. Ha, ah, forgot. I'm in sheet metal. So I'm going to extrude this and I'm going to extrude it twice. The first one I'm going to do is a cut through all and I'm going to pick just this loop, right? I want to cut through the plate. I'm not going to, I, I want to apply it because I'm going to run the uh, extrude a second time. So I hit uh, apply. That puts that little cut in the plate. Awesome, but it preserves the shape. This time I want to do a surface operation. Pick on my shape. I'm going to extrude this to, and I want to extrude it to the top of the plate. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm extruding a surface that would represent the cut. Hit OK. And there we have it. So this is... Uh, a scenario where we're using the, the surface modeling tools to complete the task. So I have a surface modeling tool. Again, I'm on the 3D panel or 3D tab still. Surface modeling tools and I can trim. So I can use the surface that I just cut out as my trimming tool. And then you get to choose what do you want to remove? Well, the bit in the middle, like that. So it's going to take that whole cut out of this corner. I hit OK. And this is what we're left with. To make it a little bit clearer, I'll go ahead and turn off my surface extrusion. And there you can see that's going to define the cut at the corner. So that is a way where we can sometimes take very complex surfacing and we can set it up using regular 3D tools. But at some point, we want to bring it back into the sheet metal realm. And in this scenario, we can use the thicken tool. So I'll grab the thicken tool pick on a face, I'll just chain the faces. And you have to decide which direction. So it's already going the right way. You can see the preview here. This, this is not correct. This time I do want to tie it back to my thickness. I want that to match the sheet metal. I can hit apply. And it takes that surface, creates a solid and joins it. So I can do the same thing here. Again, same direction, everything is good. So I hit OK, and there we have it. So it's kind of wild, pretty cool little operation there. I'm going to turn off the visibility of my surface, so I'm just left with the solid. So by doing this and utilizing the thickness and some bends, I should be able to come over to the sheet metal, and I can create a flat pattern from this. And so you can see it actually does make a flat. Of course, you could play with the geometry here to make it a little bit different relief shape, but it, it should flatten that out. And of course, you'd want to make your measurements on the plate to make sure it is adding the proper allowances, etc. but it will flatten that. And once you've got that set up, now, again, utilizing the 3D techniques, I worked hard to get this one corner now I can come over to the 3D tool. Actually, it should be in the sheet metal too. And I'm going to use the mirror tool. And I'm actually going to use the option to mirror the solid. So you can mirror the solid however you want because I use the origin intelligently. Of course, I can use the YZ plane. Hit OK. Still flattens. And then I can use the mirror command again. Uh, mirror the solid. This time I'll use the XY plane. That's just the way I oriented the part. Hit OK. And there is the design. So go to the flat and we're ready to rock.
And because we set this up, it's all parametric, right? So we can even go to the sheet metal defaults. And if we wanted this to be a different thickness, I don't have a bunch of rules set up, right? You should use rules if you get them, but I don't. So if I made this 0 0.06, you can see it actually does change the shape. It is adapting. And again, it's also parametric in the sense, like if we wanted to change the gap, maybe this 10 thousandths is a little too narrow. We can change it to 20 thousandths and it opens the gap up. So I won't play with all of the values, but it is fully parametric. You can configure it however you want by mirroring it about the origin. Again, we didn't have to make extra work planes. It just is very efficient. So this is an example of using surface modeling tools coupled with some 3D modeling tools we don't use every day like Thicken that allow us to create some more complex sheet metal parts. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and have a blessed day.